1469, the start of the Spanish royal family. Well, there were many kings on the Iberian Peninsula before and during this time, but 1469 marked the union of the two major dynasties, with the marriage of Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabella I of Castile, famous for helping Columbus sell the ocean blue in 1492 and the Spanish Inquisition. During their reign, they centralized power, conquered Grenada, the last Muslim stronghold in Spain, and the word España began to be used as a name for the United Kingdoms. When Queen Isabella Isabella died in 1504, King Ferdinand ruled her side of Spain with their eldest surviving child, Joanna of Castile, who people called Joanna the Mad because reasons. And so she ruled in name only, confined to a convent for the rest of her life as her father dealt with the day-to-day -day administration of the kingdoms. When he died, she was of course the heir to his throne as well. But, lucky for Spain, she had a son, the foreign born and raised Charles, who, as things would have it, was the heir to three dynasties, and so became not only King Charles I of Spain, but also Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, King of Germany, King of Italy. And after 40 years of reigning over all of these kingdoms, he abdicated. Side note, since he was the first king to rule the whole of Spain in his own right, many regard him as the first king of Spain. But anyway, he stepped down and the Spanish crown passed to his only surviving son, Philip II of Spain, who, after a succession crisis in Portugal, also became Philip I of Portugal. And then it passed to his son, Philip III, and his son after that, Philip IV, who reigned during very tough times for Spain. He saw the country being ripped apart from revolts in Portugal and Catalonia, all while fighting the French in the Thirty Years' War. He managed to save most of Catalonia, although Spain might not have it for much longer, and Portugal was lost forever. The crown then passed to Philip's son, Charles II, who is remembered by historians as short, lame, epileptic, senile, always on the verge of death because he had extensive disabilities caused by inbreeding. You see, his great-great-grandfather married his own cousin, his great-grandfather married his niece, who was also a product of cousins, his grandfather married his first cousin once removed, and his father married his niece, resulting in Charles, who was possibly impotent because of all of this, and so when he died childless in 1700, his will named his grand-nephew, Philip V, as his successor. If he were to refuse, the crown would then be offered to Philip's younger brother, and then finally to Archduke Charles of Austria. The Archduke just couldn't wait to be king, and so claimed the Spanish throne for himself, saying that Philip's grandmother had renounced all claims to the Spanish throne for her and her descendants when she married the King of France. And so the War of Spanish Succession broke out. After 11 years of, no, I'm the king, no, I'm the king, no, I'm the king, they finally agreed that Philip V was in fact the king just like Charles Will said all along. So Philip ruled for a bit, then abdicated in favor of his son, Louis, only to return to the throne seven months later when Louis died. Philip did have another son, Ferdinand, but he was only 10 at the time. So Philip stayed on the throne until he died, then Ferdinand took over, but died childless. So the crown passed to his younger brother, Charles III, then to his son, Charles IV, whose ineptitude made him so unpopular that the people revolted against him in support of his son, the crown prince, Ferdinand VII. Charles turned to his friend Napoleon, who now ruled France, for some help in resolving this mess. Unfortunately, Napoleon had other plans. He held them captive in France, forced both of them to abdicate, and then installed his brother, Joseph Bonaparte, as King of Spain. The Spanish people hated this, and an opposition government formed which recognized the captive king, Ferdinand, as the legitimate king. In his absence, they created Spain's first constitution with many liberal reforms. So when Ferdinand finally returned, he was greeted with the constitutional monarchy. After entertaining the idea for a bit, he was like, nah, I'm good, and tore up the constitution, imprisoned liberals, and reigned for the next 20 years. And he only had daughters, which would be fine in the old house of Trastamara, and even the house of Austria, but once the French House of Bourbon got control of the Spanish crown, they've had a no girls allowed policy. But on his deathbed, Ferdinand's wife, Maria Cristina, convinced him to do away with this prohibition so that their three-year-old daughter, Isabel II, could become queen. Ferdinand's brother challenged this, saying he was the rightful king, and so another succession crisis ensued. Maria Cristina, as regent for her infant daughter, issued a decree of amnesty for the liberals in the hopes that they would support her, and it worked. She managed to keep the throne for her daughter, but not without war. The Carlist War pitted the conservatives and liberals against each other for control of the future of Spain. It finally ended, ironically, with the liberals overthrowing Isabel II and electing an Italian Italian prince, Amadeo, 
who had more liberal ideals. But this was not enough. Anti-monarchy sentiments grew, uprisings sprung up across Spain, and before things got worse, Amadeo abdicated, declaring that the Spanish people were ungovernable. And a republic was formed, which lasted less than two years after much disagreement about what kind of republic it would be. So the monarchy was restored to Isabel's son, Alfonso VII, who ruled a much different Spain than the absolute monarchy of his ancestors, with the new title, Constitutional King of Spain. This constitutional kingship was then passed down to his son, Alfonso, who became king in the womb since his father died before he was born. Decades later, he abdicated when local elections were won by anti-monarchist candidates, and the Second Spanish Republic was established. This too didn't last. After a quick civil war that was won by the fascists, Francisco Franco, their leader, ruled Spain as dictator until 1975 when his hand-picked successor, Juan Carlos of Bourbon, became king, the grandson of Alfonso. Franco had intentionally skipped Don Juan of Barcelona, the true heir to the throne, because he thought him too liberal and hoped that his chosen Juan Carlos would continue his authoritarian regime. He didn't. Democracy was restored through a constitutional monarchy, and Juan Carlos reigned until his abdication in 2014 so that his son, Philip VI, would not grow old waiting to become king, like Prince Charles. From Felipe VI, the crown continues onto Leonor, princess of Asturias, then to her sister Sophia, both of which could be displaced if the king has a son. And that is a brief history of the Spanish royal family.